When you appraise cars, you should never be surprised at what rolls through the door. It looks like a beater until you get a little closer. So let's see what's going on under here. Only the Italians could do something this crazy. Countach V12, there's two or three or four of everything you'd have on a regular car. It's a really interesting blend of the barn fine look with the full Pro Touring Resto Mod treatment to it. The paint on the doors is starting to fail. I don't agree. I don't think that's realistic. Jim? Colin? What did you bring? <laughs> 70 F100, I've been looking for one for a long time. I needed a rust-free original paint vehicle. Right. And here's what we got. And what have you done? So we took all the old running gear, everything completely out of it. Engine, transmission, front end, rear end, everything. Every nut and bolt out of it. And then started over with new stuff. So you made a pro touring, yeah. drivable truck that looks like you ran out of money when it came time to, <laughs> to paint. do the outside. It looks like a beater until you get a little closer. Well, it certainly has the look. I like what I see so far, even though I'm giving you a little bit of a hard time here. <laughs> but you know the basic premise of why you're here. You know that you've foolishly agreed to let me be alone with your truck yeah. <laughs> and look at it and check it out and do an appraisal, which is a scary concept, I know. We're gonna put you in a soundproof booth and I'm gonna look at your truck and then I'll pull you back out here and we'll have another enjoyable have conversation. If Thank you. Need you. Me, I'll if be I need here. you, I know where to find you. Okay. So I've done my assessment of Jim's full custom 1970 resto modded pickup truck. It's a really interesting blend of the barn fine look with the full pro touring resto mod treatment to it. I think it works. I think it works extremely well. The faux patina thing is an acquired taste, but people really do like it. And you know, when you build a custom vehicle, you build it to your taste. So Jim has clearly built this to his taste. He found a really nice original rust free truck and he made it his own. So in doing that, we can walk around and I can see the little custom touches. They've tucked the bumpers in. They've painted or powder coated all the trim in this bronze color. It matches the wheels. He has these really nice US mag wheels on it with Michelin Pilot tires on it. All the gaps are really nice. The fit is exceptional. As a 1970, it would have had a side marker here, so they've made this little custom filler piece to delete the side marker, another nice custom touch. The rear bumper has really been tweaked and tucked and brought in. It has a Mustang gas tank in the back. They put the filler neck right in here. It's hidden. You don't have any filler neck on the bodywork of the truck. Now they've put big brakes on it, but they didn't go hog wild on the brakes. It doesn't have big Brembo calipers front and rear. It looks like a well thought out package. On the inside of the truck, they've done a really nice job. It has a really nice refinished dash. It has Dakota digital gauges, a nice modern speedometer and attack, all in an original looking cluster. It has modern heat and air conditioning. It has what appears to be a Tremec 5-speed in it. I like the inside. I like all they've done. They didn't go over the top. It has the original AM radio, no power windows. I like it. It's clean, it's simple. Again, not over the top, doesn't need to be. Since I'm sitting in here and the keys are in it, let's see how this thing runs. So let's see what's going on under here. The Coyote motor in it, five liter Coyote motor that is. It has a Ford Performance build plate on it. So obviously this was bought from the Ford Performance catalog. Everything is really clean and sanitary, very nicely done. It has air conditioning tucked down and hidden. You don't see anything. There's not a big wiring harness hanging through here. Again, clean, simple, it all works well. Underneath the truck, it was clearly a body off build. The chassis and the frame is all brand new, shiny, perfect. It has what appears to be a Crown Victoria front suspension. It has an S197 Mustang rear end with a four link setup and coil over shocks. Really well thought out, simple to the point. 
it works well. So this will be an old 1970 F100 that drives like a new car. Probably drives like a Mustang, I would guess. Normally, I would apply a Haggerty Valuation Tools condition rating to a vehicle I'm appraising. However, that does not apply to this F100. It's a full custom build with patinaed paint and a modern drivetrain in it. So this is one instance where a condition rating just does not apply. This is a truck that you have to value by what it would cost you to duplicate it. Its value is also dictated by the market. If you were to sell it, how many people would like the build that you did? I think this is a truck that appeals to a wide range of people. I think there would be a lot of buyers for this truck if Jim were to sell it. It has the look, it has the stance, it has the sound. It's not crazy, it's not over the top. I've crunched the numbers. I know what I think it's worth. I'm gonna go get Jim and see if he agrees with me or not. Come on in, Jim. We got some serious stuff to talk about now. <laughs> Good, let's, let's do it. <laughs> it's a great build. I really like what you've done. I like the chassis. It looks like a Crown Vic front suspension in it. You've got the Mustang rear end, a five speed, the Coyote motor. Everything you did was done the way I would do it, the way a lot of people would do it. It's done right. Before I tell you what I think all of this business is worth, mm -hmm. I would like to know what you think it's worth <laughs> because you're the owner. You wrote the checks to build it. So what do you think? I think in this market, it's an $80,000 truck all day long. I don't agree with $80,000. Okay. I don't think that's realistic. I think the way it sits now, it's a hundred and a quarter. And I could certainly see any number of people paying $125,000 because anybody who knows what they're looking at yeah. knows what it costs to build it. If you put this thing in an auction environment, if it ran over the stage at a big auction, I could see this thing going for $150,000 or $175,000 because we live in an age of yeah. instant gratification and people like cool old trucks. I, yeah, I don't have a hard time with, with that. It sits right, it looks right. There's nothing about this truck that hasn't been done to a high level and right. in, for a reason. There's nothing by mistake. Well, thank you so much okay. for bringing it. Thank you. It's yeah, always a pleasure. It. Yeah. Thank you very thank you. much. I built it to have it, not to sell it. I think the first memory of the truck was my favorite, which was flying to Fresno, California, Ubering to Visalia, California, looking at this farm truck, which I had pictures of, jumping in it with my son, and doing a road trip back to Oregon and hoping that we were gonna make it. It worked, we made it. When you appraise cars, you should never be surprised at what rolls through the door. In this case, it's Richard's 1988 Rambo Lambo, the LM002. Look at this, what a machine. It's an 88 with the Kutash motor. I bought a brand new, original okay. motor. You know why you're here, you, you volunteered to bring in this awesome truck for me to do an appraisal. You know how to open the hood? I can figure it out. Oh, I go there to do my yoga. Yeah, go do your yoga, yeah. and we'll get you in a little bit. These were an incredibly ridiculous, high-speed, high-mobility off-road vehicle. They are the evolution of the LM001 that was designed to be sold to the US Army of all people, but the LM001 sucked, so it never went anywhere. Then came the LM002 with the Lamborghini Countach's V12 shoved under the hood. It's obviously four wheel drive. They're made to go at high speeds over any terrain and they were built from 1986 to 1993. However, even though they were built for seven years, they only made a little over 300 of them. When they were new, they were about $120,000. Today, getting a tune-up on one might cost you about half of that. Richard has to be one of the last few remaining original owners of an LM002. He might be the only original owner that remains. These are difficult vehicles to live with. They cost a lot to maintain. They're hard to drive. They're not very roomy inside and they really just don't do car or truck stuff the way you would expect a car or truck to do it. They do it the Lamborghini way. Now looking at his car from a general condition perspective, he's kept it in exceptionally nice shape. However, being that it is a Lamborghini from the 1980s, 
it's not perfect. It wasn't perfect when it was new. It's all original paint, but this original paint will show you how horrible the quality control was at Lamborghini. The paint on the doors is starting to fail, where the paint is lifting and peeling back a little bit from the door itself. They all did that. The rest of the truck, there are no real condition issues. The wheels are perfect. The original tires have plenty of tread, which is good because these tires were Kevlar lined run flat tires. When you could get these tires, they were something like $10,000 a piece. Going around the back, there are some interesting features. It's a very practical vehicle. You have room for four people inside and you put two more back here in these little jump seats. <clears throat> Not bad. Right back here, the desert. The practicality is starting to shine through. Ugh. The interior is typical Italian and typical Lamborghini. For an off-road vehicle, it's luxurious. It has basically the same stuff a Countach would have. All the switch gear is nice. The original Nardi steering wheel is nice. Not only is this a one owner LM002, it's also a low mileage one. It shows 23,000 kilometers, which is about 14,000 miles. For a 1988 vehicle with 14,000 miles on it, it looks like you would expect. It's extremely clean, everything's in really nice shape. The wood grain on the dash isn't cracked. The headliner is nice. This is like a suede headliner. The original Alpine head unit is in place. Nothing's been modified or changed. From a condition perspective, it's as nice as I would expect one of these to be. Okay, I'm in here, I have the keys. There's a V12 under the hood. And we're gonna fire it up. You close your eyes, it sounds like a Countach. Then you open them and you realize you're in a friggin' truck. It's pretty awesome. It idles a little high, it's a little stinky. Probably needs some carburetor tuning. It sounds decent, needs a little tuning. Everything worked, clutch pedal feels good, the brake pedal feels good. I went through the gears before, all the gauges work. Again, no need for concern here. So now I think we should look under the hood and see where all that noise was coming from. Now this is an engine compartment. Countach V12. There's two or three or four of everything you'd have on a regular car. There's a reason why guys that work on these things get paid a lot of money, I think. It's overbuilt. Again, it was designed to be a high endurance off-road vehicle. Coming over here, I can see this is a certified US vehicle. It was modified to meet US federal emission control standards by the importer, which was Lamborghini. That's good, some of these did not come into the country this way. Now they're exempt because of the 25 year rule, but in period, a gray market vehicle that wasn't properly certified would not be worth the same amount of money. I can see the radiator's been replaced. Uh, it's obviously been serviced. I can only imagine what those bills looked like. There are no oil leaks, it's nice and dry. Everything looks nice and tidy and clean. This is about as nice as I would hope to find an LM002. So using the Haggerty Valuation Tools Condition Guide, I would call this a number three vehicle. It's really nice, it's very original, it has low miles, and it's basically as it left the assembly line with the resultant wear and tear from all the years. Solid number three vehicle. I finished my appraisal of Richard's LM002. I have a number in my head, and when I'm done dreaming about driving into a Radwood event with this bad MFR, I'm gonna go pull him out here and tell him what I think of its value. I've gone over your truck. Here's what I think. In the past year, a few have sold in the upper 200s. Granted, they were not your truck. They were not original owner trucks. The truck is as nice as I would expect a one owner truck to be. I believe if you take the prevailing market and add a premium for you being the original owner, I think the truck is worth 325 to 350 somewhere there in the current market. Mm -hmm. Because I think if you were to decide to sell it and somebody were looking for an LM002, they would want yours. I think it's just cool. Only the Italians could do something this crazy and sell it for the same price as a Countach, twice the dead cows, twice the doors, and two transmissions. So in reality, the car is free. Like most toys, it's therapy. Well, thank you so much for bringing it. Yes, sir.
Really appreciate it. It's yeah. a fantastic vehicle. Well, it's a nice, it's, it's family.